Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Welcome to my channel if you're new to it. This is episode 12 of my trailer build that I've been working on for almost an entire year. If you haven't seen any of the videos, I encourage you to go back and, and look and see how I got to this point. If you've been watching, in this video I will be covering how I've wired the brake lights and running lights and the seven pin connector to my truck. So that is what this video will show you. So full disclosure, before we get into this, I am not an electrician. I am not a professional trailer builder. I am simply sharing with you my experience on building my own trailer. This is the first trailer I've ever built. I've put a lot of thought into it, done a lot of planning so far, so good. And this is how I went about wiring the trailer, preparing it to go on the road for the first time. So these are brake lights that I got from Princess Auto. I bought an extra set to have in case for some reason one of these got damaged or broke off. I would be able to replace them fairly easily. The left brake light also has a white light under here to illuminate the license plate, which is also required by law here. So the brake lights had three holes for bolts to slide into. I was really concerned about cutting into the aluminum making a mistake. So I decided to make a template to ensure I had the holes drilled in the proper location in the aluminum. I used my trusty foam board that I've used in this project before. You can see here is sliding the bolts into their slots on the brake lights. I put the template over it just to make sure that it was in the right location, which it was. So I removed the styrofoam, I used the template to mark the location for the holes. I used a Sharpie and marked the spots where I would be drilling holes in. Just file down the room a little bit so there's no sharp edges. large hole is for the wires to slide through. And you can see the bolts fit in perfectly. I then took off the brake light, covered the holes with black silicone, tightened them up, and repeated the process on the other side. So up here you'll notice that I have five lights on the top of the trailer. They are red in the back, in the front they are amber, and they are required when a vehicle is a certain width on the highway. For example, some of the newer pickup trucks now, like the Ford Raptor, if you notice it has three marker lights in the grill. Once it reach, reaches a certain width, they're required by law. So for the running lights, I took off the trim that was covering the rubber roof membrane at the top of the trailer. I'd like to say that I had planned this, but actually it was a surprise benefit of doing it the way that I had done it. Because there was a gap between the trim and the rubber roof membrane, the running lights would fit between them perfectly. So I tied all five running lights together, running the wire behind the trim. I attached them with waterproof heat shrink connectors. And for good measure, wrap those in black electrical tape. You 
And for good measure, we have marker lights on the side, closest to the corner as I could get with the uh, framing that's inside the trailer, the two by fours here. So I had to bring it out a little bit. Red in the back, amber up front. I didn't like the look of just screwing on the running lights onto the outside of the aluminum. So I decided to cut a hole and install it from the inside out. I like the look of this better and to seal all the openings, again, more black silicone. I didn't film much of installing the wiring on the electric brakes, mainly because it was difficult to get the camera there. There's two wires that come from the electric brakes. There's two green wires. One goes to a blue wire, which runs to the junction box, and the white wire is the ground wire. I connected those with heat shrink connectors as well. Again. Um, using black electrical tape as an extra protection. Once I had all the lights installed, it was time to actually run the wiring through the trailer. I find working in a small space, 7 feet by 12 feet, to be challenging at times and I find myself constantly moving things around inside the trailer. I guess this is good practice for living in this space later. So at some point, the wires inside the trailer needed to go outside of the trailer to connect to the junction box. I wanted only one location where I had to drill into the floor, and I wanted that location to be waterproof. I came across an idea in the plumbing section of Home Depot, and I used this connection to make a weatherproof seal between the inside and outside of the trailer, with the hole being through the floor. Now the floor is three quarter inch plywood with a sheet of aluminum on the bottom. Again, trying to keep a clean workspace is a never ending job. So I was happy with how I had the wires run. The brake light wires are run on the bottom of the two by four that you see here because I'm not sure where the height of the bed will be at that location. This is a junction box for a seven pin connector. This connector goes to the back of my pickup truck and it activates the electric brakes on the trailer. It activates the brake lights, turn signals and running lights. Also the license plate light. For the junction box, I use ring connectors on all of the wires. The white wire is the ground wire that I drill through and attach it to the main frame of the trailer. I then connected ring connectors to every wire of the seven pin plug.
All these wires are meticulously connected inside the junction box and it would be an entire video explaining how this gets done because all the colors don't necessarily match up. The weatherproof box was sealed and then it was time to put my license plate on. To install the license plate, I drilled holes in the aluminum. And I decided to use well nuts for the two holes for the bolts attaching the license plate onto the trailer. These are handy little tools. And what you do is you put them into the aluminum and when you tighten it up, the rubber compresses and makes a waterproof seal. So that's going to wrap up episode 12. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up if you thought it was worthwhile. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. This is episode 12 and I have a feeling there's going to be quite a few more episodes to go before I finish this trailer. So in an upcoming episode, I'll be taking the trailer on the road and getting it weighed to see exactly how much it weighs at this point in the build. So a lot of people have been asking about that. So that will be coming up shortly and uh, stay tuned. Okay, so thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Cheers. I'll see you in the next episode.